everybody. It's Top Bets. Checking back in. We have our week 13 first look video coming at you. Uh, we took the Thanksgiving week off of content uh, for the YouTube channel. Uh, however, we are back and it's nice to have it be a normal week. I uh, hope everybody had a great Thanksgiving with uh, family, friends, and loved ones. Uh, but it's time to get back to work uh, and saddle up and try to find uh, some edges. So that is what this video entails. Before we get going, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, let me know in the comments who you like this week and how last week went for you guys. Uh, also, check out our guys at Occupy Fantasy. Uh, those guys absolutely kill it. Uh, Brian Jester, the owner of Occupy Fantasy, or co-owner, uh, won 10,000 plus on the Monday night showdown slate. So check those guys out in the link uh, below. Uh, also, matchbets.com, head-to-head -head sports wagering with reduced juice. So all you have to do is beat one person instead of the house, uh, reduced juice. Check those guys out. Uh, use code DB100 for a 100% sign-up bonus up to $1,000. Uh, go ahead, check that unique uh, dynamic concept out. And without further ado, let's go. So we will dive in position by position, pretty much quarterback, uh, running back, wide receivers, and tight end. See how the pricing lays out this week. Couple of key injuries at the running back position. CMC is out for the year. Dalvin Cook is a multi-week absence with a, a shoulder or chest injury, I believe. So we are going to have some value. Uh, they've priced up. Madison accordingly. We'll get to that when we go through the running backs. Uh, let's dissect this quarterback position. I truly only like maybe one or two games game stacking this week. Uh, the first one that just pops out uh, would be the Chargers at the Bengals. Uh, hint with the cover boy uh, being Joe Mixon. I like him a lot this week. Uh, but Burrow and Herbert doesn't look like a good matchup on paper. But, however, both of those teams uh, should, <laughs> should have a lot of pace uh, to that game. Uh, it should see a lot of fireworks, deep passes. Uh, so that's one game that I'm targeting there. Uh, I think Herbert uh, came alive last week uh, for 24 points. So he's rebounded. He had 38. Then he had the clunker uh, against Minnesota at 34 the week before. So he's coming, uh, of, coming around you know, the last three, four weeks or so. Um, and then you got Joe Burrow, who necessarily didn't ha hasn't had the greatest games uh, recently, uh, but I do believe this is a pretty uh, good matchup for Joe in this uh, in this scenario. As you guys can see, his his ceiling's about thirty, uh, so Herbert has the higher ceiling. Uh, but I do like uh, the Mixon uh, Chase kind of th uh, three one game stacking uh, with the with the Bengals here. Um, another matchup that you can go with, uh, but I don't know how much of this I will. I'll have to dissect this a little bit more. Uh, so tune into the Friday stream and then tune into the Sunday morning uh, Twitch stream as well, just to see uh, how you know how I finalize it. Uh, but Heineke and Derek Carr, that, that game stack with the football team at the Raiders. Um, if you stack the Raiders and the Cowboys last week, you're very very well off on that Thanksgiving slate. Combined for you know 69 points, uh, and Derek Carr looked like the Derek Carr of old, uh, deep pass pass plays uh, and got guys open, and that was without Darren Waller. And Waller probably is going to miss this game as well, uh, so that opens up some value at the tight end position. Uh, but Derek Carr, 24 fantasy points last week. Uh, I think they get in somewhat of a rhythm here, and Heineke is just a very good value play at 5600. Um, uh, you know, I think he could have had a bigger game last, uh, last night on Monday night football. Uh, they just ran the ball down Seattle's throat and just didn't hit, he didn't have to do too much. You know, he threw the ball 35 times, completed for 27, very, very efficient game. He just didn't have those deep pass plays that they needed to. They controlled the, that game thoroughly. Um, then a couple other guys, <laughs> I'm, I'm probably not going to stack Detroit and Minnesota. Uh, even though, you know, Jared Goff down here at 5,200 
Seems like a good play. I, I, I'm off of him as well. Uh, so I'm probably going to do maybe a 3-1 game stack of maybe maybe the Arizona side. Uh, I think this is intriguing. I'm just going to wait and see on Murray's health. Uh, but I think this is a good uh, – I, I kind of like to pick on uh, players that come back from injury and kind of know that they're, they're right. I mean, they're not going to play him unless he's 100%. They've seen that by uh, you know la- last three games not playing uh, another bye week, so he's had a month off uh, ready to get going. So and, and you know you know you know Kyler, uh, he absolutely can uh, ball out with the best of them. So uh, I take a stab here potentially uh, depending on how the beat reporters come out with his health availability. Uh, Jalen Hurts is dealing with an injury as well. Don't know if he's going to be able to suit up. Daniel Jones is doubtful uh, this week with a neck injury. So somewhat of a value play, maybe Giants well, quarterback position, but uh, I'm probably not going to go there. You could stack uh, San Fran, Seattle. However, I don't like to stack uh, divisional games late in the year, especially because they're, you know, they're second matchups. They don't tend to go very high. And if you saw Russell Wilson play their night, it probably didn't uh, leave a good taste in your mouth. And the guys up here, you know, Brady, Stafford, Jackson, um, they, yeah, you could definitely go that route. I, Brady, especially against the Falcons, uh, he, you know, if you you had told me that Tampa Bay scored thirty eight and you know Tom Brady didn't score twenty or fifteen fantasy points, I mean, I I tell you you're crazy. So, uh, but no, that was the freak uh, freak play of the week with you know Fournette having four touchdowns and Brady only accounting for one. So. You could, you could go back to that 3-1 stack here. I wouldn't stack that Atlanta side, but I'd probably run it back with, um, with Cordell or, or Pitts maybe of that side. So that's, a, that's an option as well. Uh, so moving on to running back. So this is where it gets interesting. I, I always like when I can kind of decipher who I want to play in my player pool. Last week was a disaster. I, I could not narrow down my running back player pool. And, of course, when I do narrow it down, I didn't have Cordell, and I didn't have Fournette, and I didn't have Mixon. I had Fournette in my Tampa Bay stacks, and then I didn't like how it was building and took Fournette out completely, and that's exactly how I burned all my money. So it was fun. Uh, I, did, I did win a little bit back, but uh, didn't lose at all, but it was not a fun week uh, for me on Sunday. Um, so let's dive in real quick. Fournette back to 7,300. Uh, the, the Cook injury opens up a lot of value to Alexander Madison. He's going to be very heavily owned this week at 7,600. So he's not cheap. If he was $2,000 less, you know, 5,600, anywhere, anywhere below 6,000, I would have said automatic lock button. Everybody in the DFS community would have. Uh, so DraftKings was very smart uh, and priced him up. And then if you guys see here, uh, weeks three and five, these are without Dalvin Cook. He ran the ball 26 times, ran the ball 25 times, caught six and seven passes. So thoroughly involved. He is the guy. Uh, so don't be afraid to play him. Uh, he's probably going to be him and Mixon are going to be my top two that I'm going to play or pivot off of one another. Um, you know, he was priced at 6000 and 5500 so... Uh, you could have locked button him back in week three or five. However, at 7,600, you I'm not going to lock button, but I'm going to have a good exposure to him. Uh, and then speaking of Joe, he has one of the best matchups of the week against the Chargers who could not stop a nosebleed. Uh, Javante and Melvin Gordon ran over them uh, all last week. And Joe Mixon has been one of the best running backs in all of football the entire season. He's not laid, laid off the, uh, the gas there at all. Uh, you know, 30 attempts in week 11, 28 in week 12, and I don't see how he gets below, you know, any anything below 20 in this game. Uh, I, dr- I truly like Joe Mixon a uh, uh, buttload in this game. Uh, he will be probably my highest own uh, exposure as of right now. Uh, you could go a 1-1 stack with Fournette and Patterson in the game. Just two guys that I just don't want to put in my player pool for whatever reason this year. Um, guy at the top, you know, Jonathan Taylor, don't know why they didn't give him the football earlier. Uh, he still ended up with 20 fantasy points. So 9,200 is probably where he's going to stay at for a while. He's the new CMC. 
Uh, I probably won't have too much because there's a lot of uh, a lot of mid price guys that I like a little bit more. Uh, one in particular, Eli Mitchell. So I was on Jeff Wilson, lock button Jeff Wilson didn't pan out. Uh, look at these last two week weeks for Eli Mitchell when he's been healthy: 27 attempts, 27 attempts, and uh, nine fantasy points. Ah, just didn't get in the end zone. Uh, then, but he was going to be heavily targeted last week in the uh, as you know five receptions in the past game for 30 fantasy points. Debo is going to miss this game. They are going to rely heavily on Eli Mitchell. Uh, don't get it twisted. They're going to run it down Seattle's throats. Uh, Eli Mitchell uh, is going to be a top play for me as well here at six thousand dollars. Potential lock button. I'll say potential. Uh, I don't believe it's going to be a lock button week, but you never know. Um, where is Chuba or Chuba? He could potentially be one. I'm just going to type him in. I don't really know. Is that? Oh, are they on a buy? They're on a buy. Okay. All right. So they're on a buy. Uh, I'm not going <laughs> to obviously be on that. Um, however, next week we will be on Chuba. Maybe. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, but for the running back position, let's see what else we got. Freeman, Gibson at 5,700 is very intriguing here. Um, McKissick, I don't know his status as of Tuesday the 30th, so we will wait and see on that. If he is out, fire up Gibson. Uh, Gibson and Eli Mitchell provide a lot of salary relief, so I like that, uh, like that angle. Uh, depending on who the who the running back is for the Eagles, you've got to fire them up. You know, it could be Sanders, it could be Boston Scott. We don't know yet if uh, if one of them is out. Uh, definitely fire the other one up. So tune in later on in the week to see that. Um, anybody else down here that is worthwhile? Yeah, Boston Scott at 4,600. Again, you know, you could go that route like the, with the Phillies, uh, Philly running backs. Don't see anybody else that sticks out down there in particular, but I do like this middle, mid priced area with Mitchell uh, and Gibson in particular. You know, you could go Devontae Freeman, uh, but then you also have the Sanders, Boston Scott. And if you do want to pay up, uh, pay up accordingly for Mixon, Madison. Uh, and maybe Taylor, uh, depends on how you're constructing your lineups. If you have a cheap stack, uh, definitely could throw Taylor in there for sure. Moving on to wide receivers. Uh, this is the cheapest Cooper Cup has been in about three weeks. Uh, so he's been at 9,000 uh, weeks 8 and 9, 9,300, 9,600. Now he has a steep drop to 9,000. Uh, I think that's a pretty good price point here. Uh, I don't think he's going to get too much ownership. You know, not the 20% like he has been, uh, but he will be, you know, 10 to 12, maybe maybe uh, creeping up to 15 in certain contests, especially in the cash lineups. Uh, but, uh, you know, play Cooper accordingly. I don't know. Uh, I mean, he's going to have a bunch of receptions. He just does, hasn't sniffed the end zone, I don't believe, for a couple weeks now, for three straight weeks. So he hasn't gotten the end zone for three straight weeks. Uh, it's been a while. If you, uh, you, know, you could have some positive regression here, but I'm probably going to stay away from him. Um, maybe have a little bit of exposure. Maybe match the field. Jefferson, Allen, McLaurin, Thielen, Chase. Out of these guys, obviously I love Jefferson. Uh, I'm always good with playing uh, Justin Jefferson. McLaurin and Chase are prob- probably going to be in those stacks. So I like those two over... Probably uh, Allen and Jefferson. Uh, you come down here to the 6,000 range. Jalen Waddle, um, I've been saying his name a lot this year. I uh, recommended him on the streams. He is just a target magnet. Uh, 12, 10, 6, 9, 10, you know, 10, or 16, 10, 20, 31 fantasy points. Uh, guy is the person to own on that Miami offense. Potentially a league winner for you fantasy owners out there. Uh, I like what I'm seeing out of Jalen Waddle, and he's priced accordingly at 6,400. Uh, guy that I will have in my player pool a lot of. Strange Monday night game where Metcalf had one catch. I uh, don't know what to 
think about that. I just, just I'm trying to write off the Seattle offense. Probably have a little bit more lock at two bed cap if I have them in my player pool. Uh, I haven't decided that just uh, you know on Tuesday. Deontay and Claypool are another options that you can do. Deontay is the uh, safer option at 6,800. Probably okay, so he's at 6,900. It's been his highest, so he's right at his peak here. You know, guy. <laughs> Talk about target magnets, 13, 6, 13, 13, 14. Just doesn't have those big, big plays. Um, you know, you see those deep balls at Claypool, uh, but Deontay is definitely viable, especially in cash games if you want to go that route. I'm trying to see some uh, value plays. You know, if you're if you're looking at that Charger Cincy game, stacking wise, T. Higgins has to be involved. Uh, if you've, you know, you had a pretty dud game against uh, Vegas. You know, on week 11, however, he showed what he is capable of ceiling-wise last week. Uh, he's a big, big receiver who can go up and get it with the best of them. Uh, I, I'm going to have a fair share of T. Higgins this week. Don't forget what Darnell Mooney did against uh, the, the Lions on Thanksgiving. Uh, you know, 123, five receptions, caught deep ball after deep ball. Uh, absolutely love what I see out of Darnell at 5,600. I'm going to fire him up this week. Uh, then I'll give you guys one more. I will say OBJ is in consideration. Depends on his health. Depends on his hip. Or I think it's his back. Or a hip pointer, whatever it is. Uh, just keep an eye out on him. Uh, could be a nice uh, value play there. Uh, there's one more down here that I liked. Oh, Chanel. Here you go. So here we go, Chenault. They were talking about a big, big game out of him last week. I think it's this time around, and then maybe one or two more weeks after that, um, you you're going to definitely see the, the the offense shift towards Chenault uh, instead of you know how they were featuring Agnew a little bit. Uh, so it's going to be the Robinson and Chenault. You know, they said that he was going to get some uh, rushing attempts. Maybe this is the week that they finally do. Uh, maybe he potentially gets a red zone uh, carry, but I like him at 4,400. His price didn't change from last week. Uh, good value play. I think he gets double digits this week. Uh, quickly go over tight end. Like we said uh, early on, we had the injury to Waller. So that opens up uh, Mor- Moray, Moru. I don't know how to exactly say it. He will be highly owned this week at 2,700. Uh, should get a ton of run. You know, he had a touchdown. He's got two, couple of touchdowns on the year, three touchdowns to be exact. Um, so it's not like he's new to the offense or anything like that. Been around, can definitely be viable at 2,700. The other one we got is O'Shaughnessy at 2,600. Uh, Dan Arnold has been on or just got put on IR, so can definitely be viable this week at 2,600. So you have. Two value plays at tight end. And if you want to pay up at receiver, mid-priced uh, running backs, value tight ends, and an and a expensive quarterback, you know, expensive stack or whatnot, uh, probably would be the way to go this week. Uh, if you want to pay up at tight end, the go-tos going to be probably Andrews and Kittle. You could go to Zach Ertz and, and Gronk at 5,300. Never going to say no to Gronk. Pitts, I'm going to probably... If I'm stacking that three by one, Tampa and Falcons, I'm gonna have Pitts and Cordell. Probably the only exposure I'm gonna have to Kyle Pitts as of right now. He just puts a sour taste in my mouth. He should explode, but uh, teams double team him, and it's just tough to get open for him. Uh, Logan Thomas at four thousand. You saw what he did. He ran like sixty snaps when he came back. A big, big part of this offense uh, will be involved in game stacks in that game. Um, Friar Muth. Scored a touchdown, I think, in four or five out of the last four games. Uh, I want to say he's in, yeah, so yeah, he's in concussion protocol, so keep an eye out on him. Otherwise, he is very viable this week against the Ravens. Uh, and then the Chargers are playing. So, man, I don't like recommending this guy, uh, but you have to against the Chargers. Uh, Uzuma, if you're game stacking, you got to have him in your in your in your game stacks. Just because the Chargers give up so many damn touchdowns to tight ends on the season, so Uzuma is another cheap guy. Uh, but you've got O'Shaughnessy, you've got uh, Moreau, and you have Ozu- Ozuma. 
points for the three value plays for tight end, or you can pay up to the uh, to the big guys up top. So let me know what you guys think of this uh, video. Put a comment in or on the chat below and let me know who you guys are on. Uh, if you guys are tailing, if you guys are fading, I appreciate you guys tuning in. Uh, a little bit more extensive first look video, uh, but I was excited to do another YouTube video and <laughs> get it out there. So appreciate you guys tuning in, and I'll be back with my uh, top plays and stacks video uh, rolling out on Friday.